Ever wondered what Commander would be like without the Commander? Are you a Commander player who intentionally doesn't bring their Commander into play because you like the challenge or you find the game more fun that way? If so, you may have already seen the appeal of one of the best formats for Magic the Gathering. Highlander. No, not Elder Dragon Highlander, just plain simple Highlander. Or 100 Card Singleton. If you have not yet seen my definition video on Highlander, you can do so here. Highlander is an incredibly fun format that can loosely be described as one-on-one -on -one commander without the commander. Officially called 100 Card Singleton, Highlander is played with 100 card decks that are restricted to no more than one of of each card, except of course for basic lands. It's a hundred cards, but there is no commander and no limits on your color combinations. So what factors do you need to consider when building a Highlander deck? Why don't we work in reverse from a typical Commander deck to get a better understanding of what Highlander is all about? I imagine everyone here is at least vaguely familiar with the Commander format at this point. The vast majority of you have probably played Commander and likely even own a deck or two. So first, imagine a game of Commander. As already stated, Highlander is not multiplayer, but instead one versus one, so imagine a 1v1 game of Commander. Again, many of you have probably already played 1v1 Commander games. If so, then you know that they are very different from multiplayer. There's fewer shenanigans and fewer crazy interactions than there are with three to five other players. Less stalling, more direct. Now imagine that before you play this 1v1 commander game, you and your opponent both shuffle your commanders into your decks. Highlander is, after all, commander without the commander. How well does your commander deck manage without the guarantee of your commander? Can you still win without them? What else does your deck do? Finally, imagine that instead of starting at 40 life, you and your opponent each start with 20 life. How do you envision this game will go? At this point, you are playing Highlander. These differences usually make Highlander games much faster than Commander. So before you just take your Commander and shuffle it into your deck to sit down and play a game of Highlander, some important questions need be asked. First and foremost, how effective is your deck if it does not have a commander? How does your deck play when all 100 cards are shuffled together equally? Instead of beginning with a commander, singleton decks such as Highlander begin with a deck type or deck strategy. Instead of imagining yourself building a Niv-Mizzet deck or a Sig River Guide deck, you begin by deciding if you want to build a tribal deck or a combo deck or an aggro deck or a permission deck and so forth and so forth. Most commander decks have an extreme emphasis on their commander. The other 99 cards in the deck are usually meant to interact with the commander in a highly synergistic way. Some even rely on the commander as a win condition. But in Highlander, you can't count on that legendary creature card any more than you can count on any other card in your library. Let's try building a Highlander deck together. Remember, this is just an introductory deck to the format. It is a starting point. As such, we want to try and keep cost under control. I don't want to pick a strategy that needs a $500 mana base just for starting our first deck. So for this first deck, let's be basic and try an aggro strategy. I want to cast big creatures and stomp on my opponent's face with them. But remember, we should anticipate faster games where our opponent is putting pressure on us right away. So that means I don't want to just go aggro, but go fast aggro, which means I want to ramp into it. Fast aggro ramp without a complex mana base? Sounds like we're in green. In a standard or modern 60 card constructed deck where you are allowed up to four of a single card, what you generally try and do is create consistency. You want as much reliability as possible when it comes to which cards you'll be drawing and when. 
But with 100 cards where no two can be the same, how are you going to be able to achieve any type of consistent competitive performance? You are able to do this by utilizing cards with the same or similar functions through the use of tutors and through understanding how some dramatically different cards can still serve the same role. For example, two dramatically different big green monsters, each serving as a potential finisher. Let's start with function. How many different cards can we play that have similar functions? I said we would want to ramp, and while we can't put in a playset of Llanowar Elves, we can find multiple cards that do the same essential thing. Llanowar Elves, Findhorn Elves, Arbor Elves. Oh, and finally a use for an Elvish Mystic. Typically, we'd want about 35 to 43 combined mana sources and accelerants. Since we're looking to ramp as strategy, we'll be on the high end of that. Alright, so since we're going green ramp, I can see already that we're going to have a lot of elves in this deck, and elves tend to work synergistically together. I'll keep that in mind as I assemble the other pieces of this deck. Things like an Imperious Prefect combined with anything from Wellwisher to Immaculate Magistrate can quickly get out of hand. Or a Zuri when you've got a dump truck of mana available. Tutoring is also very important in Commander decks, but even more so in Highlander decks. Being able to tutor for the right card at the right time can mean the difference between winning or losing a game. It's a good idea to know all the tutoring options available in your colors when constructing your deck. Remember, this isn't going to be a four hour long game, so casting cost is absolutely important. Since we're in green, we have several options. Among them, Green Sun Zenith and Court of Calling will get our creature tools out when we need them. Since there are going to be a lot of elves in this deck, a good old fashioned elvish harbinger is nice. But a Sky Shroud Poacher is simply amazing. A Fauna Shaman acts like a tutor as well. This not only helps us cut through our 100 cards to get what we want, but we can begin to play this deck a little bit like a toolkit, using creatures to get the effect we desire. But remember, we can't just win with a lot of mana and a clever answer. This is Big Green Stompy, so we're gonna want some big bads to spend that mana on. Which ones we choose is ultimately up to you. Someone once said that Commander can best be described as put cards you love in a deck and have fun. Highlander is similar in that regard. In Highlander, you finally can play with your all-time favorite cards, but you can also do so competitively. Now in here, since we're staying basic and cutting costs, I'm just going to go with a Liege of the Tangle. A Primordial Hydra, which is a favorite of mine, an Elder Scale Worm, a Terastodon, and why not a Panglacial Worm, because we're going to be searching our library a lot. This deck can really ramp up the mana fast, so the buyback on something like Worm Calling has the potential to just go nuts. With all this tutoring, we can pull out a different big bad given the situation. Also, the elves will be applying synergistic pressure in their own way. And I'm also going to include a Nissa Ravine so we can create pressure on multiple fronts. Also, I'm running creatures like a Bellowing Tangle Worm and an Elvish Champion to make it likely that our forces can finally swing without being blocked. And I love the combination of Elvish Champion with the newly made Song of the Dryads. Highlander is such a great format, and I also love how it stays interesting longer because fewer games end the same way. In this, our first deck, we might win with a Genesis Wave or an Army of Elves. We might swing with the entirety of our forest thanks to the Liege of the Tangle. No two games are alike. This means decision making is very important. Highlander decks tend to be highly interactive with one another. You need to know your deck inside and out so that you can go for the right card at the right time as the situation demands. Remember, Highlander is one of the perfect formats for people who play casually or who only play outside the game store. Your deck will never expire. And the decks that you build to play against your friends will be very fairly matched, allowing you to build what you want, how you want. You can also get games more easily 
easily, not needing to round up four of your friends, and more quickly, not needing five hours for a game of Commander. And you know, if you really want to, you can sit down and have a multiplayer with your Highlander decks, or even choose a legendary to serve as Commander. I've said it before, but I have to say it again. Highlander, it's the best format you aren't playing. I hope this video has been helpful to you. Don't forget to check out next week's Highlander deck lecture and hit that subscribe button. And remember, you can't play Highlander at Target or Walmart, but recent changes allow your local game store to sanction 100 card singleton events. So when you spend money, spend it where you spend your time playing Magic.